Hey church, um, I'm not Matt, as you can tell. Um, I'm much better looking and uh, a better pastor. But I, I, uh, I got the, the start today. He gave me the keys to the car, so I'm not going to wreck it. Um, I hope because I think I'd be fired after that. But I'm the student pastor here, and my name is Artur. And if you haven't got to meet me yet, I'd love to meet you. I, there's a lot of new faces. Me and my wife were talking a couple weeks ago. Every day we walk in, we see new faces, so we're still trying to put names and faces together. So come meet us. Um, we actually just moved to the area on Tuesday, so we're now, I, guess, I don't know, Denverites? I don't know what you call, call yourselves here, but, but we live in Maiden, so I guess we're just called maids. But, um, but yeah, we're here. We're excited to be here, and I'm glad that I get to preach today. Um, before I get into it, there's one announcement. I said I was a student pastor, and I haven't met a bunch of you, but if you have kids, 6th uh, through 12th grade, next Sunday, right after the service, right in the cafeteria area, we will be having a, like, I want to say parent-teacher conference, but that's not it, um, like a, a, greet, a meet and greet for me, and I'm gonna, we're going to have lunch. You can sign up for it on the, the app or on our website, and we'll just kind of go over some some things that we're going to do this year um, in the summer and then kind of in the spring and then hopefully game plan a little bit for the, the next school year. So come to that. Before I get into it, there's an there's a awful orange sitting right here, and I swear that Anthony did this to throw me off my game today because they are wearing Cleveland brown orange T-shirts <laughs> sitting right here in front of me. And I, I can't help but notice that it's just it's, it's so bad. Um, <laughs> Especially because I'm a, I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, so I just see it, and it, like, just corrupts me. So I'm just going to say, Satan, get behind me, and just, con <laughs> just con continue on with my day. So, so we'll get into it. But the last, not, not Christmas, but the last Sunday we spent together, Pastor Matt talked about the triumphal entry of Jesus. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on from there, and we're going to talk about the fig tree. And everyone knows the fig tree is where fig newtons come from. You can just go up, you can just go up there and pick them. They're all pre-wrapped and just eat them. And I'll honestly say I've never had a fig newton before, so I'm going to have to try one after the day. But, of course, that's not true. The fig newton um, is, is not off of a tree. But the fig tree is very common in the North African area and in the Mediterranean climates. So this is not out of normal, it's not peculiar that Jesus would find a fig tree walking around um, in Israel. They would, they're very common. Um, the fig tree likes kind of the arid areas. Um, so so this is that's just kind of a backdrop for that. But we'll start in Mark uh, 11, and verse will be on the screen. Mark, Mark 11, and we'll go verses 12 through 14. I would read out my Bible, but I can't open it because I have a handheld and it'd flip all over the place because um, my ears are too small for the uh, like the Britney style mic that Matt wears. So I'm gonna have to just read off the screen. <laughs> but, so verse 12, on the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs, and he said to it. May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his, and his disciples heard it. That's kind of, as I was preparing for this this morning, and even a couple of weeks ago, I talked to Lacey, my wife, about it, and she was like, I'm interested to see what you do about this passage because it makes no sense. I said, I know. It is, you know Jesus is mad at a tree. I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. Um, so, so I'm, I'm going to unpack this um, a little bit so we can get into it and understand it more together as a church. So he's, he's traveling, right? Him and his disciples are walking. And I looked up from where they're going to, to like where they came from is about two miles. So obviously a two mile walk, you'll probably get hungry. And, and Jesus was, a, was fully man and fully God. So he experienced hunger. So when Vince was talking about fasting, that's not, you know, he, he's not just like Superman, he doesn't get hungry. He gets hungry too. So as he's walking, he's like, he sees a tree. It's, it's full of leaves. And it's probably off in the distance. You know, I don't know how far, but it's not like he's just right here picking. 
he sees it and he's probably getting a little excited thinking, oh, here's some food, that's a fig, they're common, they're, pro they're probably some sort of fruit or fig on it, or I don't know if it's a legume, maybe I heard that today, I don't, I don't know if a fig, I don't know what a fig is classified as, but um, he, he sees it and he thinks, I'm going to go get that. The trees are green, or the, the, the leaves are green, the bark is probably on the tree intact, it, it probably has some nice soil around it, so obviously what else is there, but there's going to be some sort of, of food that is even ripe, or maybe not as ripe, but to eat it, just to sustain him to keep walking. But he gets there, and there's nothing. And what's odd about the fig tree, or this in particular, this fig tree, I was doing some research on, on the fig tree, um, and if a tree, I also had to look up what it meant by in leaf. I didn't, I didn't know what in leaf meant, but if, it, if a tree, a fig tree is in leaf or has leaves on it, it should have some sort of fig on it. Even if it's like a little nub or a full fig, it will have something on it. So Jesus thinks because there's leaves on, on the limbs, on the branches, they'll have some sort of something I can eat. But it didn't even have that. So I can understand why Jesus is thinking this is a, this is a terrible tree, because I mean it, it. I mean it's bloomed and everything, and it doesn't even have the bare minimum that a fig tree is known for of having a tiny nub or even the fruit. And I'm thinking, well, that makes sense that he's so angry, but that's out of character for Jesus to just <laughs> cuss out a fig tree. Like I mean, th think about it. he's he's cursing this fig tree. And the disciples are like looking at him like, oh my gosh, he's like, Jesus lost his marbles. He's mad at the tree. You know, and I, I'm not saying that when you go eat lunch today, curse your waitress or waiter. That doesn't, that, that doesn't bring your food quickly enough just because Jesus was mad at the tree. Because I'm thinking that's probably what the, the disciples were, were thinking. But again, Jesus is using this as a teaching moment. So we'll, we'll continue on and jump to verse 20. I don't think Matt wanted me talking about the Jesus flipping tables at the temple because I don't think he wanted the uh, any of the students to run around turning tables over in the in the lobby or, or in the in their in their local Applebee's. So I, I'm just going to stick to uh, stick to verses 20 through 25 right here. And this is as they're going back towards um, the fig tree. As they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. And Jesus answered them, Have faith in God. Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And whatever you stand, and whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also, who is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. And that was even a little confusing to me, because he goes from the fig tree and, and goes straight to grace and forgiveness and prayer. And I'm not sure, I, I wasn't sure what to make of that. Because he shows his his kind of his vengeful nature against the against against the fig tree, and Jesus isn't vengeful, and then he goes straight back into grace. But I think it's a beautiful lesson um, he's trying to teach teach them. Um, I don't think it's a coincidence that they moved right back past the the fig tree that's withered. Uh, I also think that is a testament to show Jesus' power and strength that he just turned this tree like into a withering pile of wood. You know, it was, it was good for nothing for him. There was, there was nothing that he could get out of it. There was nothing that it was useful for. It was just a tree with leaves on it. It didn't really sustain anything. It didn't give anyone nutrients. It didn't, I mean, maybe a little bit of shade, but I mean, that was it. So there's three points that I want 
to try and teach from that, that I've gained from this. And the first point, I'm going back to verses 12 through 14, is true worship bears good fruit for God. And what is true worship? True worship can be fasting from anything, right? That's probably going to be bearing good fruit for God. I like TikTok. I like your, your attention span will thank you. But you'll, you'll also just be more aware if you just get off TikTok, get off Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. It will help you. And that's, not, that's not just for students, but that's a plug for it. Worship is coming to church. Worship is, is giving of your talent, time and talents. Worship is serving one another. Worship is, is singing even though if you sound terrible, right? I'm glad I didn't have the mic on me this morning. But there's so many ways that we can worship that will bear good fruit. Now, I'm also not saying that you should just kind of do good things and call it worship just so other people will see you, right? I think that... that, that that's, that's the wrong type of worship. I think that the tree was kind of that window dressing a little bit. And I don't think that's what God calls us to be. Don't do good works just to, to dress up. Don't just dress up because you might look good. Don't just do this because someone's going to see you. Don't help the old lady walk across the street if you just don't really care about her, right? Like, do, do things because it's true worship. And in turn, that will, that will bear good fruit. To pair with this, I'll read out of Matthew 7. This Matthew 7, 17 through 20. So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire, Thus, you will recognize them by their fruits. I think that's the same thing as us. You're going to recognize them. You're going to recognize Christians by their fruits. Now, no, we don't have fig newtons hanging off of us, but you will see and recognize that person is different. That person in their school is different. That person on their team is different. That person in their workplace is different because of the fruits that they bear. I think that's very important for us to grasp because I don't want to just go my life and do things if it's not true fruit, if it's not bearing true fruit for God. Second point, the tree is outwardly living but inwardly dead. Like the window dressing I talked about, you're going to see off in the distance a nice tree, a nice leafy green shrub, whatever it was, but it, there was nothing there, right? I mean, you, you got up to it, and Jesus knows that it, there was, it was just a tree with leaves on it, and that's why he cursed it. We don't want to be a living people, a living church, but inward, inwardly dead. When you show up, when we have our building, we have this building. When people drive by, the last thing you want them to say is that that church looks living from where we see it, but inside there's nothing. It's just a hollow, black emptiness. It's kind of like Cleveland, but <laughs> yeah, um, but but no, we don't want that. In all, in all seriousness, it's, it's, it's not, I don't want my student ministry to be like that. I don't want my students to look like that. I don't want me to look like that. Because I, I don't think that that's going to glorify God at all. And that's not, that's not the healthy way to live. If we just do things to look good for one another or look good for someone that's at work or at school or someone to like us, God knows. God sees the inside of us. He, he knows who we are and what our intentions are behind it. Next, third point. True worship has faith in God. And that's going back to the verses 20 through 25. 
I'll pair that with Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8. Blessed is a man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when he comes. For its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. I think that that couple of verses is what it looks like when we truly live and trust and have faith in God. I think that Jesus went back to that teaching moment and saying, look, he was talking about the mountain, this mountain. I was reading about that verse. He was saying this mountain, he, they must have been next to a mountain. And my guess is that mountain had, had probably had some sort of castle or citadel or fortress on top of it that a king had to move to get that fortress up in case some sort of war broke out. He needed to escape for safety. He got up that mountain. Think about if, if man in that time could build a, a fortress on top of a mountain, what could God do? I mean, they talk about like God can move mountains. We can move mountains. Think what God can do. That's, that, blew me, that blew my mind away, really. I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, you know, we move mountains ourselves. We can get a jackhammer. We, we, can, we can get a bulldozer. We can get big dump trucks. But God can do incredible things even more than that. The fig tree and the temple were one and alike. That temple that God or that Jesus was talking about was, was bustling probably on the outside. I think that's why Jesus was flipping the tables. It was bustling and looked like it had a lot going on. But it was dead inside. The fig tree looked like it had a lot going on, but it was dead inside. Do we look like we have a lot going on and are dead inside? Does this church? I hope not. I don't think it does. But you never want to be complacent. Because one day, you're going to get older, the church is going to get older, and it's just going to be doing the same thing over and over again because it looks good. Or people might see it and recognize it. Or people might talk about, oh, you know, so-and-so goes there. But it might just be dead inside. And that's not going to glorify God. Something that brought me to this church besides Jesus was how I thought this church worked. It just, it just works right, at least for, for what I'm seeing. The people in this church just work right. And if we keep, keep that in mind and that in focus, I think it will continue to work right and go against the grain of this, this world. Having that faith in God, that, that incredible faith, will help this work right. No matter what you're dealing with, no matter, you know, what you're worried about with your family, your friends, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, your work, school, if you have that incredible faith in God, it will end up just working right. And I know that's hard and that's difficult to think about because I, I sometimes don't have that incredible faith in God. Because sometimes it's hard as a human to have faith. But that's what Jesus calls us to. I just hope that as a church, us, the pastors, we can all ponder this one thought. Is what is this church? Is this the temple and the fig tree? Or is this something different? Something better? something that actually bears fig newtons off of it. With that, I'll pray. God, thank you for this day and this new year and all the many blessings that we've had and that we've just come from and know that we can enjoy in 2023. And let us always remember about the fig tree and what that means for our life. Let us continue to bear good fruit 
in the fruit of the Spirit, in the fruit of you, to glorify you and your kingdom. In your Son's name we pray. Amen.